Uh, this video will show how I built a tornado generator out of parts readily available in hardware shops or you may have around the house or in the garden. Some parts were ordered uh, from China on eBay. So this is the main engine and it consists of on the bottom there is a cake stand and underneath it's lifted up there's an air gap between it and the, and the table below and in the center there's a fan an extractor fan which is pushing air up into the middle section which is an inverted flower pot the air then ent exits the flower pot using these right angle 22 mil plumbing fittings now this is what will be used to create a rotation in the vortex above this there is a container con with water in it but also it has some mist generators and we use this mist to trace out the tornadoes it forms so if I just have a look inside now you'll see that there's actually six in this one you don't need six you one or two would do but I, I like lots of cloud effect so this unit is going to sit on the floor and above it there will be a two meter cylinder clear transparent and on top of that there will be a fan to create an updraft that's the second thing we need to create a tornado is rotation and an updraft and we'll see that in another clip of video this unit is the one that sits on top of the two meter column and it consists of a small fan which is going to produce an updraft surrounding the fan are, are a number of different LEDs some white red and blue they're high powered LEDs and this unit is going to be inverted so it's going to be shining down and it's going to illuminate the tornado through its length and in fact on the bottom I'm going to put a mirror as well above those mist generators so that the light bounces back up for a second time to illuminate the trace around it I have some switches but they're really just to vary the lighting and the rotational speed of the top fan and the bottom fan so the next clip we're going to see the whole apparatus assembled. Here we see the complete tornado generator. So again we've got the base unit, a slight air gap underneath to allow air in for the fan and then the air is going to go into that inverted flower pot, come out the right angled plumbing fittings to create a rotation motion. In this case it's clockwise. Also you'll notice that inside the container filled with water and mist generators there's now a mirror and as I said earlier this is to help illuminate the traced tornado vortex now this is quite a, a big machine now so if I come back it's actually it's, it's two meters high so I cannot get it all in in one shot so it goes right up to the ceiling and at the top was the unit we discussed which houses the top fan to produce a low pressure and updraft and all the various switches that control the lighting and fan speed. So we can't show the tornado generator working until it's dark. So again it's a full two meter height. So once it's dark we'll do another video clip and show it coming into light. Dark. All we've got is the mist generator and uh, it is illuminated from below so we need to put on some LED so we'll put on some red, blue, white and we'll turn the top fan on to produce an updraft it takes a little while for the vortex to form you'll see it slowly form above the mirror rotating clockwise and that's because as we mentioned before below the mirror the air is coming in through these right angle pipes which is producing a clockwise rotation. So if we look at the vortex now, it's beginning to form. And if we pan up slowly, we'll see that the thread is extending all the way up through the whole height of the two meter column and going out the top near the ceiling. So we go back down towards the bottom. We want to get the vortex so that we can see the eye of the storm. That, that will appear as a dark line down the middle. So I'm just going to increase the speed of the top fan. And this should increase the rotational speed. 
the width of the vortex and also we should start to see that dark line which would be the equivalent of the eye of the storm. So I think we can see it now. If you pan up, there's a dark line running all the way up the column. And that's the fully formed tornado. Now even though at the bottom it's getting quite a violent vortex with that dark line, this simulation is still not complete until we turn on the bottom fan which will pull air in from underneath the column and force it out through those right angled outlets to produce even more rotational speed. So we just turn that fan on. Momentarily this, this column will collapse completely and then reform in a far more violent fall of the tornado. And in fact it's filling the whole cylinder now with cloud, with water vapor just make out in the middle of this mayhem is that still that dark line which is the eye of a much more powerful tornado. So this would be the equivalent of a very destructive F5 tornado. And it fills up the full two meter height of this column. If we kill the power on the bottom fan, it's going to revert to that earlier form so the, the vortex slows up, the mist dissipates, but we still see that clear dark line running up the middle. And this is that earlier form, so this has been entirely powered by the fan at the top. Purely been pulling air up. And if we lastly, if we kill the power to the top fan, then this is just spinning by itself so it will decay, it will slowly decrease its speed and then it's going to start to collapse down, here it goes collapsing down, all the way down, all the way down until if we look closely all we're left with is some wisps of cloud slowly moving above the mirror and that's the end of that simulation. I'd just like to mention that the construction of the two meter cylinder is really easy to achieve. It just uses sheets of acetate, A3 overhead projector acetate sheets, two per section in a six section. So they're just sellotaped together and stacked up one on top of the other. So that's, that's really easy to achieve.